could have an Eric swoop chalk week. Um, but now it seems like Ebron's going to play. Um, yeah, v- going back to Vance might not be crazy. I, I'm using Vance. I mean, I've come back from earlier in the week where I, I'm now, like you, a little anti-Ben Roethlisberger. But can you still play uh, Bray? I, I still have him over Howard. I have him at number 12 in the rankings. I think he's still a perfectly fine play. I still think he'll get at least a red zone target in a game that's going to feature a lot of red zone drives. And Atlanta struggles against tight ends. Yeah. We've seen that in the past. They just struggle against people in the slot. Yeah. So. I, I think he's he's still viable. More than Howard? I mean, again, it's it's tight end. I More than Howard. I just don't know how healthy Howard yeah, is. Yeah, I, I guess that is that is the point. You know Brait's healthy. Um, and Jameis does like throwing to Brait, and Fitzpatrick did not. This is true. At least historically. Well, that could change. I mean, also, Brait was only on the field for like 25% of the snaps that Fitzpatrick played. Hmm. Um, yeah, I, again, I think they're both viable. If I had to play one, it would be Brait just because I know his health. All right, Alfred Morris or Crabtree? I'd just play Crabtree. Yeah, i just play Crabtree. Crabtree's going to have, like, a really smash week here soon. Because he's getting all the, like, I'm playing more John. I'm, I'm only in dra- DraftKings-wise. I'm playing a ton of John Brown. Yeah. No Michael Crabtree. That sets up perfectly for, like, a three-touchdown Michael Crabtree game. I mean, possible. But, again, why wouldn't you play John Brown at this point? That's true. Uh, let's see. Full point PPR, Quincy Inunua or Corey Davis? Corey Davis for me. Yeah, Corey Davis. Uh, Hyde, Lynch, or should I take a chance on Ronald Jones? I think, like, those are two good running backs. Yeah. Who do I like more? I probably like Hyde just slightly more. Yeah. But I think I have them back to back in the rankings. Well, Let's it's see. interesting. Actually, no, I like Lynch slightly. I have Lynch at 12. I have Hyde at 13. That does, that's a true coin flip. I would just say, for as good as Marshawn has looked, and he, he has looked very good this season, um, it still feels like the Browns are the more willing team to just force feed their running back. There, there are still games where Marshawn leaves with only 13, 14 touches. And Oakland is not a team that doesn't run a ton of plays, so... Uh, it's surprising. I would say hi just because I, I know the volume's locked in. Is 35 fantasy points in the range of outcomes for Derek Carr today? I would think so. Against Seattle in that pass defense? The run defense better than pass defense. If yeah. they get behind, then they're chucking. It's it's on the table. Yeah, uh, it's, it's not the likeliest of I, outcomes. I would say it's it's one of the least likely outcomes. I, I thought Carr was in a great spot last week, and that offense just disappointed entirely. Uh, Sanu, Lindsay, or Allen Robinson in the flex? Probably play Allen Robinson still. I might lean Philip Lindsay, but like you're dealing with a third man on the totem pole in Atlanta with Sanu. Yeah, it's it's but it's for me it's between Lindsay and, and Robinson. And with Lindsay, it's still a split between him and Booker and Freeman. Like that's a three way split. It seemed like he started. I understand that, but it, it seemed like he could take and seize control of this. But that could flip back. It, at any it could. Moment. It just seems like he's been the best back they've had consistently all season long. And this is probably a script that leans more towards his talents than it would. Uh, Royce Freeman's talents. Should I swap all my Tevin Coleman on DK shares to Beast Mode because it's Revenge Beast Mode Day? I actually don't hate that. It's fine. I, I just um, I'm not super jazzed on Coleman as like a really big upside play because I worry about the Edo Smith stealing his touchdowns. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Tampa's just allowed so many points to skill position players, though. And and frankly, like this is a week where the chalk is concentrating so much on DraftKings because there's only so many like reasonable plays. That it's probably just a contrarian week. Just play guys who are good off the beaten radar that no one's using. That's fair. And you might just end up winning everything. Like, look, in a, G- in a GPP, if you want to play... We don't talk about cash games on this show. Cash games are for losers. Yeah. You're not trying to win a million bucks? Give me a break. Yeah. What, what are we here for? Yeah. You want to win 10 bucks today? Good for you. Yeah. Um... I would say in a season-long league, I'm definitely playing Coleman over Lynch. Yeah, uh, no, no, I would play Lynch over Coleman. I, I would play Coleman over Lynch. But in a GPP, if you want to switch that up, because the ownership is probably going to be concentrated on w- particularly one of those sides, it's fine. Pick two, full point PPR, John Brown, uh, Aaron Jones, or Doug Baldwin. I play the two receivers. Yeah, two receivers. Amigos. That's us. Ah. Trey Burton or CJ Uzuma. I'd play Burton. Burton, yeah. Uh, Tyler Croft is out. For the Look, I like I like Uzuma a lot, but when you have Trey Burton, who is just going to be consistently a top ten tight end option every single week, it's touchdown or bust for all these guys. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, there's a chance that Uzuma catches a touchdown, but he asked me who has more volume. I'm I would say, say Trey, Trey Burton. Burton. Yeah. So, uh, who do you like better between Jarvis Landry, Deshaun Jackson, Tyler Boyd, or Emmanuel Sanders in a GPP? Probably Landry. Yeah. He's just the best of those guys. Yeah, it, all things being equal, just take him. Sure. I mean, there, there's a chance that there's a funnel effect to Boyd this week, but even still, I like I like Boyd. Jarvis Landry. I just yeah. yeah. 
Oh, this guy says, Derek Carr, top QB play today. Watch. I will be watching the game, so I will see it if it happens. But... Yeah, but I'll be honest. I don't know how much of that game I'm going to watch. It's a London game. Oh, fancy. So they'll have, like, you know, the, the guys in the hats come out. It'll be nice. Everyone will be wearing all the different jerseys. That's what? fun. Oh, this guy must be new to the show. David, Watkins or Jared Cook? The answer is always never Jared Cook. Would you play him over? I, I don't like Jared Cook this weekend. Okay. Uh, Fuller, Ridley, PPR, I have Julio. I would play Will Fuller over Calvin Ridley. Ah, would I? I'd probably play Ridley because I'm not 100% sold that Will Fuller is not going to be a decoy again. I'd say that there's like a 15% chance of that happening this week. That's fair. Do you need to decoy against the Bills? Actually, their, their past defense has been pretty good the last couple weeks. Um, I would, I would say Fuller, but... It's close. It's, they're both wide receiver twos. Hmm. I'll say Ridley, just because he seems to have touchdown, actually. Sure, yeah. Uh, any concern with the weather in London? I was high on a Seattle stack, but not so much now. No, it's not super windy. And, like, in, even in the Denver game with the weather, it's not super windy. Yeah. So, if, if it's like if it's a bit, like, cold, or if it's a bit, like, slippery out, because it like, could be, like, I think it's, I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit. I think it's, like, 26 Fahrenheit. It's, like, minus 4 Celsius. Right, yeah. So, it's below freezing. So, the, the, the ground might not be uh, the most stable. Hopefully, this is always a thing that happens, too. You, you see it, like, once or twice a year. Like, remember when the Colts last year went to Buffalo in that super snow game? Yeah. It's not going to be anything like that. But they didn't have, like, snow cleats. Yeah. They are like, why would we need snow cleats? Maybe yeah. the Rams, like, forgot snow cleats. I feel like Sean McVay would be on top of that. Seems like he'd remember that, yeah. But some teams just don't because they're idiots. I mean, it's fair. But in all circumstances like this, I always think it benefits the offense. It always does. Yeah. If you know where you're going, you can... Get to where yeah, you're going. In terms it, of traction. If you have to react to people who are you know, going this way yeah. and then cutting back this way, you Bad might news. fall over. Yeah. So, uh, Tower Boyd or Josh Gordon? That's Tower Boyd. Yeah, Tower Boyd. Todd Gurley, McCaffrey, Hunt, or Trump? Pick two. <laughs> I don't know if that's like a joke or if that's like a typo. I can't think of who that would be typoing off of. Gurley and McCaffrey. Yeah. Uh, let's see. STD Howard. Jordan Howard or Sony Michelle's STD someone I'm not thinking of? Standard. Oh, standard. I thought it was like some sort of player abbreviation. It's a venereal disease. Yeah, well, I mean, it could be like Vince Young. You call him the STD. <laughs> the STD. Jordan Howard or Sony Michelle, I'd go Sony Michelle. Yeah, Sony Michelle. Doug Baldwin or Alan Robinson in season long? I like Baldwin. I think I'd go Baldwin as well. Uh, last one before we get to uh, some more, some line movement here we can talk about. 14 team, half point PPR league was offered this trade. Oh, great. It's a trade question on a Sunday morning. Thanks for me. No. No, pass. Uh, line movement. You talked about... I oh, should have looked up that. Let's see. Score props. The game with... Have we had any word on Tannehill versus Osweiler no. yet? The no. line has moved from minus two, which the Dolphins opened at. But it was plus three. It was like minus three Chicago most of the week. Yeah. It's now minus six. Yeah. It still feels super trappy. Like you mentioned, this is a low pace game. Those tend to be super close. They tend to be unders. It's true. And if that's the case, you're getting a six point home dog. Yeah. The Bears are the better team, but they've been much better at home than on the road. Uh, they will be wearing their orange, not their black in Miami. I saw that. So, great way to beat the Heat, not wearing all black. But I don't know. I still kind of like Miami to cover the six. It yeah, just seems like. It's, it's, a big, little, it's a big total for Chicago. It. it Turns into one of these things is if you, and this is always the best way to judge some of these lines. If you ask anyone this morning, who do you think is going to win, Miami or Chicago? I bet you 99% of people would say Chicago. Sure. sure. In that case, you generally just take the points and go the other way. That's it's a fair. fair fade the public situation. It's fair. It's fair. I have no I, other real analysis beyond that. I do feel that. like we tend to, it's a lot like picking value plays where people tend to remember when fading the public definitely worked. They don't tend to remember when it didn't well i think home dogs are 15 and 6 against the spread this year that's fair yeah look it's it's a big line for the bears if there's any aspect of this dolphins def or dolphins team that's been above average it's been their defense um i i just have so little faith even in this offense i guess the argument would be oh that's a bet what's that uh total sacks in that bills houston game over under five and a half Oh, that is an over. It's juiced to minus 150, but I, I'm in on that. Um, I can play that. I guess the argument would be, in your case, though, the Dolphins' offense was already one of the worst in football. How much worse How could much it get? How much worse could it actually be? 
Like, so, I could see this being like, it depends on what they can do on first and second down, obviously. But if they can just run a little bit, that, that'll make their play pace even slower. Suck the air out of the ball. Well, again, the only two teams who are averaging fewer yards per drive than the Dolphins are the Cardinals and the Bills. It's not exactly the company you want to keep. So, yeah, how much worse could it really get? Mm-hmm. Uh, other just weird shifts in some of the lines we've seen. The Chargers have went to a from a one point road favorite to a one and a half point dog. Cleveland's now favored in that game. I think Cleveland's super public this year. People just want them to be so yeah. good. It's it's this weird combination of goodwill, hard knocks. There's, there's just a lot Baker of like, positive momentum. It's almost like. In when the Red Sox were down 3-0 to the Yankees in 2004. Then everyone just... Everyone became, became a Red Sox fan for a little bit, and now we all regret it. But, yeah, there's there's just certain things that get you caught up, and it seems like people want the Browns to do well. Uh, the other big, like, line trends this morning have been towards the under in a lot of these games. So, it opened the week. I think there were three games that were over 50-point over-under, and not talking about the Chiefs-Patriots game, because right. that's, that's still 58 and a half. But Bucks Falcons fifty seven and a half is the game total. The next closest one now, Rams Broncos hmm. fifty and a half. So that Pittsburgh Cincinnati game has dropped considerably. It's good, huge. It's now, it's down to fifty. Well, again, that's, that's a, a three and a half point drop. That's also a very public narrative. The, the Ben Roth. It's going to be, but it's also this is going to be a Smash Mouth football game. There's probably that, but but I think that with five years of sample, enough people have caught on to the. It's not even just the Roethlisberger road thing. It's the Roethlisberger 1 p.m. road start thing. He's he's just been terrible in those games. I think three of the 22 times he's played a game under those situations the last five years, he's been a top 10 QB in fantasy like three times. So I, I think when enough of that narrative picks up, people just saw a high number and assumed, let's, let's bet the under. And generally speaking, in those situations, the, Pittsburgh does not hit their own implied team total, which would lead you to believe this game's going to go under. But the, the line has moved towards the Steelers, though. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, so the Bengals opened as three-point favorites. It dropped to two and a half immediately. It's now one and a half. So, I mean, the Steelers are also a very public team. Sure, but I feel like people are kind of off the Steelers a little bit. Maybe. I, I think also the Bengals didn't do much to inspire goodwill last week. Um, so. Yeah, especially with me when I had the Dolphins. Yeah. And then they scored 24 points in the fourth quarter. Two defensive touchdowns. Oh, fun. I'm, I'm aware. That's fun. I'm aware. Got to enjoy that when you're holding a big, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, they're up by 20, and I have six and a half. This is great. It wasn't yeah, great. It wasn't great. Bad times. Had a lot of Bengals D, though. Good for me. Uh, let's see. Other moves. Uh, no shift in that Cardinals-Vikings game. I still like the 10 with the Cardinals. I think that's a closer game. One of those non-competitive close games. I Because the Cardinals can never do yeah, anything. That was one of those things where sometimes you you see on DK, you'll see a value or a price point that you go, that's probably not correct. I don't necessarily want to exploit it. I know you do have a lot of Cardinals D. I'm I'm not going that far, but I would say that when I saw that price point, I knew that was off. And how could you use that to your advantage? I would say just taking the Cardinals with 10 points is a good way to go. It is. And, like, the total on that's 44. Like, unless you think the Minnesota wins, like, 24-3, to three, which is plausible. Well, here, I'll say this about Josh Rosen. At the very least, I mean, we all have this preset narrative about when a rookie quarterback comes in, oh, they're going to utilize their tight end, they're going to use their running back as a safety blanket, blah, 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 blah. His A dot through two games, not that his predecessor was a high bar to clear, but his A dot is three and a half yards more than Sam Bradford's was. He's up around 10 yards average depth of target. Like, he'll try to sling the ball. Like, the Cardinals could have a couple long touchdowns. They had one last week. I don't know if they can do sustained drives, but they have big play potential. And we've seen the Vikings give up big plays. Yeah. And if Dalvin Cook is actually on a pitch count, that means they're going to throw more because they seem to have no... Well, I don't know if they can throw more. Well, they'll continue to throw at the same pace that they've been throwing yeah. at instead of reverting back to a close to 50-50 split between the pass and the run. They're going to stick around like 65-70%. That's going to get the play count up. Yep. And that's going to get the play count up, and it just gives the Cardinals D more opportunity just to feast on Kirk Cousins. Sure. Not to say that Kirk Cousins is not going to score points. He's definitely going to score points. That offensive line is bad. The Cardinals pass rush is top 10 in football. In fact, it might be top 5. After last week, I didn't check it later in the week. When it... They weren't. They, they were good at getting pressures the first couple of weeks. They haven't got a ton of sacks until last week. But no, they're they're good. Well, I mean, they were they were already inside the top ten sure. adjusted sack rate anyway before sure. getting a whole bunch of sacks. Yeah, I can look that for you. Um, um, but still, like that's just an opportunity that if they're not going to turn around and run the ball every time, and they're still going to continue to drop back. And if you have Patrick Peterson on Stefan Diggs, that just means a lot of funnel targets towards Adam Thielen, towards Kyle. They're still ninth. They're still ninth. Yeah. Yeah. And still though. And we know that the offensive line is not great no. for Minnesota. And Kirk Cousins, prone to bad mistakes. Makes great plays, bad mistakes too. It's on the table. 
Uh, let's get some more questions. Smash the like button while you're out there. I'm going to try to bring that up before every question and answer period because that's why we're here to answer.